Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. It's Liquid here. And today I just like to share a few stocks that I've bought recently and also explain kind of my decisions behind why I bought them and what my plan is going forward. So recently I purchased two shares of Google's parent company Alphabet. I also bought 50 shares of Meta, which owns Facebook. And I bought 100 shares of Shopify. So you've probably noticed the trend here. All these stocks uh, are in the technology sector. And that's because tech stocks have been the most discounted this year. So the stock market has 11 different sectors and they are represented by these different colors here. So you have these uh, overall S&P 500 returns. And then you have all these other sectors that make up the S&P 500. So if it's above the S&P 500, then that means these companies performed uh, relatively better. And if it's below, then they performed worse. So if we take 2015, for example, the overall S&P 500 produced a 1.4% return. What's interesting is there seems to be a pattern here where when a sector is down one year, especially if it's down a lot, it tends to do a lot better the next year. So financials, for example, did uh, worse than the average. Industrials also did worse, utilities, materials, and energy. And what happened the following year in 2016 is financials did better than the S&P uh, 500 overall. Uh, industrials also performed better. Uh, utilities also did better. Materials did really well. And finally, energy, it was down 21%, but the next year it was the best performing sector. When you have a really negative year in one sector, that typically means it got oversold. So often the next year it bounced back and it goes higher than what is expected. Um, so in 2020, of course, uh, energy was a real laggard. And then what happened in 2021? was energy bounce back up. And of course, this year, energy is doing very well also. Of course, we don't have the final data yet for 2022 for this year because it's not over yet. But we know that the sector that is really hurting right now is the tech sector because the S&P 500 is uh, year to date down about 14%. But if we look at the NASDAQ composite, this index, which composes of mostly technology stocks, a lot of growth stocks in here, um, this one is down 22%, and it's not evenly distributed. Portfolio manager Ben Carlson tweeted uh, just recently that out of all the stock in the NASDAQ composite, 43%, so a little bit less than half, are actually down 40%. And if you randomly chose 10 stocks from the NASDAQ composite when they were at their 52-week highs, then pretty much 3 out of 10 of those stocks that you randomly chose are down 60%. So that's quite a lot. Now, whenever there's uh, turmoil and pain in the markets, there's also the opportunity to pick up stocks for fair value. So the reason I'm choosing to buy a lot of tech stocks recently is because tech stocks are down. And also because if you look at the total returns over the last like 15 years, information technology stocks tend to be the highest returning stocks. So my thinking is right now is a good time to buy high quality tech stocks because they are cheap. When the tech sector bounces back, we're going to see a very strong performance from that sector. Uh, so let's talk about these stocks that I purchased. Uh, starting with Alphabet, I purchased two shares at around 2300 each. And the reason I bought it was because Alphabet came down a lot. Even just over the last month, it dropped like 10, 20%. But the company is still growing very well. And Google should continue to be a leader in the search and advertising business for many years to come, probably decades. Because pretty much everyone uses Google in one way or another. Uh, even criminals, for example, bank robbers, the way they choose their next target is by using Google Safe Search. So looking at the earnings, it's expected to go up over time, and it's still a very high growth company. But the real reason why I bought this company recently, or I added to my existing position, uh, is because the P-E ratio is now much lower than before. So the price to earnings ratio is just how many times the company's annual profit do people want to pay for the stock. Uh, so why is 20 times uh, price to earnings ratio or 21 times a good time to get in? Uh, well, I think because uh, historically, at least over the last five years, Alphabet doesn't seem to want to drop below 20. 
So whenever it dips to that around 20 or 21 mark, I think it's a pretty good time to get in. Of course, there's no law that says it can't drop below 20, so maybe it could go to 15. But if that happens, it'll probably just bounce right off and go back up above uh, 20 times again. The forward P-E ratio is just the price to what the next 12 month earnings will be. And again, it seems to not go below 20. And every time it dips down, even like to the 22 mark, for the most part, it just bounces right back up. And even if it falls below that and hits the 20, it doesn't stay below 22 for very long. That's like less than a quarter. I think the same thing's gonna happen now. It's hit 20. There's probably not much further. It can drop from here. And of course, all of this valuation analysis only makes sense and it's only a good buy if the company is really steady in growing its profits and growing its top line and uh, you know not going to lose investors money. So I'm gonna look at the sort of 10 year historical uh, finances of Google and we can see the revenue is growing um, and then the earnings per share also growing, which is nice to see. Uh, free cash flow looks pretty good as well. Uh, not growing every year, but the trend, the overall trend is going up at a pretty good pace. And then down here at the return on assets, all look pretty good. It, this, you don't need it to grow every year, you just need it to be consistent. These numbers here are indications of how effective management is using investors' money. Obviously, there's no guarantee for investing, but if someone were to ask me like, hey Liquid, what is the one company, the one stock I can buy right now that's going to guarantee me the best potential return in the next five years, but also with the smallest chance of losing my money, I would say you can buy Google now. Like, I'm pretty comfortable to say this is a company you can hold for the next five years. It'll probably give you like a 20% annualized return over the next five years, if not more, just because it's been hit really bad right now. Uh, so the next stock is Facebook's parent company, uh, Meta Platforms. And I pretty much bought this for the same reasons. Uh, let's take a look at the detailed stock report here. And I'll just scroll down here to yeah, the price to sales. This is like a new low for uh, this company. And trailing PE, it broke through that uh, 20 and it's basically trading at about 15 times earnings. So according to this Morningstar research report, it's only trading at 0.6 times its fair value. Uh, so what that means is the fair value is this red line. It should be trading at 361, but its current price is 205. So that's 60% of that, which means you're getting like a 40% discount. So I think meta platforms can easily go up to $300 in like one or two years. And you can easily double your money in like five years based on where the stock price is currently sitting at. And right now, all tech companies are pretty much out of favor, which is why this stock has been pummeled just like the other stocks as well uh, that I've been buying. Yeah, look at that five-year EPS growth. I mean, and, and that's like annualized. So the last stock I bought uh, was Shopify. I had a put option that I sold at $580. It basically closed when it expired at 580 or like 579 point something. So uh, I basically took ownership of 100 shares. And now the stock price is all the way down to $430. Yeah, so I am down more than $14,000 on Shopify. But that's okay because uh, I know that it's going to go back up above uh, what I purchased it at, which the average price is 577 because with options, the premium you made from selling the put actually gets added into your uh, cost. Shopify is a little bit uh, tricky compared to like a Facebook or a Google because it doesn't really have uh, steady earnings yet. It just started to become profitable like in the last couple of years. So here is the uh, history of Shopify's financials. Revenue growth, very strong there. But diluted earnings per share, you can see it's like negative for the most part. And then positive in 2020, 2021 was pretty good, but it's a bit of an anomaly. They had a one-time payoff, which is not part of the core business. So that doesn't really count. But instead of anything to earnings ratio, we can look at something else, uh, which includes the revenue, because the revenue has been around for a while. 
So a couple things we can look at with the revenue, the price to revenue ratio or price to sales. We can also look at the enterprise value to sales ratio. And for the most part, it's above the 20 times uh, line. However, recently, as you can see, it's dropped all the way down to, that's uh, 10.6 price to sales. So anytime I see like a really sharp drop like that, I just have a feeling that it's going to have a like a V-shaped recovery. And then the other thing we can look at is enterprise value to uh, sales. Enterprise value is sort of like how much money you would need to buy the entire company. And if I use uh, finbox.com, I can go to Data Explorer, search for Shopify here. And one of the metrics I can look at is the enterprise value to revenue. And uh, historically, you can see it doesn't really go below 10. So right now we're sitting at 9.4, you can see up here. So 9.4 is very low. We've never seen anything this low uh, in the last like seven years since 2015. It was at 10.5 before, 10.4 uh, went up to 30, 54, and now we're at 9.4. So I don't think this is very sustainable. So I can't guarantee this is the lowest point it'll go, but I can't see it decreasing much lower than 9.4. Um, which is already at a record low, especially when the average uh, enterprise value to revenue ratio over the last five years was 24.9. But let's take a look at how fast Shopify is growing. So all the research that you can do in interactive brokers, uh, you can select the stock you want, like Shopify, and then you can go to new window and just open up a fundamentals explorer. And that's going to open up this window here, which has the overview of the company. You can look at the key ratios. It's all pretty useful information. I'm going to go over all of this in a different video. But for now, I'm just going to click on the value tab. And if I go down here to the uh, revenue, it basically tells me over the last like 10 years what the revenue uh, was and also the year over year change. So look at how fast this company is bringing in new sales. Like the year over year growth is really insane. Even if we uh, assumed, let's say it slows down to like 40% year over year growth. Well, what that means is uh, if you have say $100 to begin with and it grows by 40% one year and then it grows by that again, you're, you're almost looking at 200. So almost double your original revenue. So when looking at a chart like this, and let's say, yeah, it's at 9.4, even if it stays at 9.4 for the next year, which is possible because from 2015 to 2016, it pretty much stayed the same. Well, if the revenue is growing at 40%, then in two years, the price of the stock will double, even if this ratio stays the same. So instead of uh, like $430, if the revenue doubles, you'll get around $800. And if the enterprise value to revenue ratio goes up to, you know, from let's say 10 to 15, then you're looking at over $1,000 in uh, stock price. So that's why I'm not really worried. Shopify is now at 430, even though I uh, bought it at 577. In fact, what I'm going to do uh, this following week, I'm going to buy a risk reversal on Shopify. So what a risk reversal will look like, um, I've explained before with my Lightspeed risk reversal, but basically I'll choose to buy the stock somewhere around here, uh, like 300 to $350. And I'm gonna go over to the call option side and I'm going to buy a call option for, uh, I haven't decided yet, but somewhere around here. Uh, so what I'm thinking is with Shopify, when the earnings come out this week, it's going to surprise on the upside. So a risk reversal basically leverages options to uh, really take advantage of any movements upwards in the stock price. Now, one reason I think Shopify is going to uh, move higher in price is because if I go to uh, tip ranks, this is a uh, website that kind of shows you what analysts are thinking. There's one feature here that's uh, pretty interesting, which is website traffic. And this tells you how many visitors Shopify is getting. And uh, right now it seems like it's going up. This is monthly. If I look at quarterly, it's also going up. So because Shopify is an online 
e-commerce business, the more people that visits its website or uses its platform, chances are the more customers that it's bringing in. So even if there's a miss, it's not going to be like a huge miss or a huge disappointment because the website is still getting a lot of traffic, which means people are still wanting to go there. They're talking about it. Uh, another thing to look at is Google Trends. So if you search for like the Shopify keyword, you can see how much people are talking about it. So it's actually nice that it looks like this trending term is a little bit higher than in the previous couple of quarters. So I don't think this increase in trending uh, and also the, the increase in uh, websites traffic is factored into the price of the stock today, which is why I think uh, as soon as it releases its earnings, this should get a nice pop. Now, of course, I could be wrong, but the nice thing about the risk reversal strategy is there's kind of a, a buffer there. There's a margin of safety that I can choose. So for example, if I choose um, like 340 as my uh, strike price for my put option that I uh, sell, even if the stock price drops because the company missed its earnings or it has really poor guidance, and let's say it falls from 430 to 400 or even like 380, well, as long as it doesn't fall below 340, then nothing happens. This option expires out of the money. I get to keep the $1,200 from selling this option, and I don't buy another 100 shares of Shopify. Uh, another company that I want to run the risk reversal on is uh, Metafast. This has also come down a lot from its highs. Uh, it was at over $300, and now it's trading at 178 a uh, shout out to Vladidas for mentioning this stock to me. And I think both Metafast and Malibu Boats, the, the other company he mentioned, are both uh, good companies to potentially invest in, especially at this time. So um, just looking at Metafast, based on a lower growth assumption, the stock price, I think I would buy it at $143 today uh, instead of 178 which is what it's tr uh, currently trading at. So 178 So I'll probably... Uh, going to the options here, maybe go out to like a June uh, expiration and choose to buy it at maybe 145. Just really quickly, Metafast is a uh, company that has earnings, so you can use the PE ratio for this. Its earnings are growing very well over the long run. However, the stock is only trading at roughly 13 times earnings. Can it fall further? Sure. I mean, in 2020, it fell to below 10. So if it falls to that level again, assuming the earnings don't change, then you could look at, uh, you know, like another 10 or 20% drop in the price of the stock, which is why I wouldn't mind picking it up at 145. Um, that's like a roughly like a 20% drop from here. So the risk reversal is a very risky uh, option strategy. And I don't usually like to play earnings, uh, but it's just recently the stock prices are so cheap and I feel like we're going to hit an inflection point because if we look at the NASDAQ here, so let's say over the last year, there's basically been this nice support over here where every time the NASDAQ falls to that line, it just bounces right back up and it actually hit that uh, a few times. So it, it dropped not quite, but then it hit it here and then it bounced up and down, hit it again, up, down, hit it again. and now it's actually gone through a little bit. There's a lot of trepidation in the market right now because it can go either way. But I think by next week, we will have a better idea of uh, whether we've, you know, we're going to bounce off that low line or uh, if we're going to continue to fall further. So I'll update you guys next week on how things go. Uh, hopefully my risk reversals turn out well, but if not, that's okay too. It just means the market is cheaper. So I will probably be continuing to uh, write options. And if the options get into the money, then I will probably just buy more stocks. The lower the stock market drops, the more shares you can buy with the same amount of money. So uh, no complaints there. And the steeper the stock market falls, the sharper the recovery is going to be. It's pretty much impossible to time exactly where the bottom is, so I just buy more shares as it falls. Even though I'm using uh, margin debt to pay for those shares, I think it'll be worth it. Once 
we get into like once this bear market is over for the Nasdaq, I plan to sell、uh, some of my shares at a profit to pay down some of my margin debt. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for next week.